absolutely start if this works out well once you get this feeder assembly refined put this on everything this is nice i would love to see this on every one of your printers right across the board just start if this works out well just start integrating it into all your printers this can't cost much more than any other aluminum assembly now i regret buying all those aluminum feeder units because now i want this one <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to see this on your entire lineup from the Ender 2 all the way up to the S5. Put this on everything. This is beautiful. Put this on the CRX. Put it on everything. This is nice. Once you get it refined and you know it works right. Um, start doing more of this with the aluminum anodizing. It's beautiful. It looks good. Thank you. No stupid plastic strips. The printer is clean and beautiful. Good job. Now let's get it put together. <laughs> One little gotcha for assembly. I would inform users to slide the bed all the way forward before attempting to install the gantry. Because otherwise, when you go to put this on, the plugs can hit this bed. If you don't put it on right, it'll grab and break it. So you have to do this off to the side and then bring this one down. Or slide the bed forward and nothing interferes at all. And the two parts go together just fine. So uh, include that in the instructions to slide the bed forward before attempting to install the gantry. Once you have the piece there, you can then slide this back, no problem. For anybody who happens to question the foam, all you gotta do is shove the screws into the holes and the foam will hold them in there. And then you go in with your wrench and tighten them. I love that. Just make that foam a little bit longer because there is a gap here. <laughs> I still love the music. I know people think that's janky, but I like it. It is in Chinese, so I'm assuming if I hit the gear, and then I hit the language icon, I can then select English. Yes. There we go. And now it's all in English. Okay, so we are built. It is turned on. I am getting readings from the thermistors on both units, so I know that is working correctly. Time to install the spool holder. Um, this fan is coming off as a little noisy. This fan is not bad. Um, that's not bad. This is actually quieter than the CRX and quieter than the CR10, so that is improving. Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Not as quiet as I would like, but it is pretty darn quiet for a stock printer. That's not bad at all. So let me get the spool holder installed and we'll put some fill bit in this thing. Another suggestion for here. This filament path, it can sometimes be a little finicky. That internal PTFE tube will solve that problem because it, it won't have anywhere else to go. But also, this could be a problem over time, this angle here. Now, with this kind of filament, no big deal. But um, if you start using abrasive filaments, it'll actually start to cut into this. Even the aluminum, it might actually start to cut into it, especially if you start using, um, you know, glow-in-dark filament, metal-filled filament, um, carbon fiber filament, it'll start cutting into this. So make, um, possibly have a little extension on the end here with a hole large enough to accept a piece of PTFE tube. And then what you can do is you can, uh, the end user can take this tube right here, cut a little piece off like that big, and stick it in the end here for this to pass through. And now that is a smooth, lubricated, a bend for the filament to enter the assembly here without abrading it and um, if it ever does wear out you just cut off another little piece and replace it you know once a year whenever it wears out but that'll keep you from wearing these components out if the end user uses abrasive filaments just something to think about not a big deal not a huge deal you don't have to go back and redesign but the next time you do a revision might be something to consider adding uh, a, a hole that can accept a piece of PTFE tube and hold it tightly in place so that this filament will pass through a PCF, PTFE tube before touching the aluminum. This way it's a nice straight path inside. Also, forget everything I said about stepper dampers. I don't know what you did, I don't know how you did it, but the steppers are silent. That's quite amazing. <laughs> it's really quiet. That's impressively quiet. I mean, they, they barely make a noise. That's it. That's impressive. Um, is the Does that have something to do with the double metal plate that you have inside there attaching each stepper motor? Is that damping somehow, or did you do it electronically on the board? I'd be curious to know that.
Alrighty, I'm about to begin my first test prints, my bed leveling Marvin. Uh, your firmware still has the same bugs that the CRX firmware has. It will not read files in a folder, and it will not read long file names. About seven or eight of the files, I had to shorten the file name to get the file system to see the files. So that's definitely something you need to address still for both the CRX and the CR10S Pro, is that it will not even see folders not to speak of read files in the folders so your memory card as you ship this cannot print a file your dog test print is in the CR10S Pro folder which this cannot read um, so I had to copy those files to the root of the folder oh now that fans pretty loud I don't know which fan that is oh that's probably the board fan here so you, you know, might want to look into trying to get a quieter fan for that. The others are okay, but that fan's loud. Whatever fan is thermally controlled that just kicked on, very loud. You might want to look into a quieter version. But it cannot read folders, contents of folders, and it cannot read file names that are too long. Uh, I want to say about 10 characters or so. I haven't actually tested it. I'll have to actually make several files with different numbers of characters and see where it cuts it off, where it can't read it. But, um... That's issues that need to be fixed. We are printing the Marvin, and um, it took me a little bit to figure out how to level the bed. I figured out that based on your Chinese instructions, by the highlighted red marks, I was able to figure out that I can do the Z offset with the, um, the up and down arrow on the left. Okay, so be sure to include those instructions. They need to be included. So basically, I let it home. I then manually leveled using the four points on the bed to get the bed itself level after making sure the X arm was level because this one was off by two millimeters. Um, then I did turn on auto bed leveling, let it do its 16 point auto level, and then I did the Z offset until I got what I liked and perfect first time. So that worked quite well as long as you followed the steps properly. Um, besides the fans, which are actually a bit painful i mean the the high pitch coming from these fans is quite annoying i'm gonna have to pull the case apart again and figure out which fan is causing the noise i don't think it's that fan i think it's the one up here on the control board and this one's a little on the noisy side too it's got a, a turbine like sound that's a little annoying um, i'm not sure what you can do about that i'm going to try adding a baffle here to see if that will See, just holding my hand in front of it has a big impact, so maybe having a small baffle in front of there will help reduce that noise. Um, but it's very, very annoying. <laughs> the printer is quiet. The fans are, are very loud. Um, another thing I'd like to see on the screen here while printing, when you click adjust, I would like to see an object option to adjust the flow rate. There's no option anywhere here to adjust flow rates, and I'd really like to see that. Actually, okay, so it's not the parts cooling fan that's being really loud. It is a little loud, but that's not the high pitch noise. That's, I think, this fan inside here. Um, but there's no place to adjust flow rate, and sometimes you need to adjust the flow rate, especially when you're doing a vase print or a single wall print or something like that. Um, so it'd be nice to have flow rate added to this adjust screen. So here you have your Z offset. Good. We'll move that up a little bit and right below it have another set of arrows for flow rate. Or have it be a, a touch box where you touch it and you punch in what flow rate you want. You know, 97, 98, 100, 105, 120. Uh, but that'd be nice to add. Otherwise, the interface is wonderful as usual. As you can see, I still have plastic here that I can't remove. It won't come out. <laughs> it's pinched between the screen and the metal frame so I can't get this this plastic out but otherwise I love this touchscreen interface it's very responsive it's very fast um, it's nice it's good just put a full-size SD card over here <laughs> uh, more to come the print is looking very good so far so we'll see when it's done well I just did a power off or zoom worked flawlessly no problem I just flicked the power switch Turned it back on, it says, would you like to resume, and it resumed. So that worked very well. And by the way, this is the first print. 
I'll send you pictures of this, but with the exception of my Ender 2, which did a slightly better job, I do believe this is one of the finest Marvins I've ever printed. I am actually quite shocked that a printer this large did that. I'm impressed. I've already posted pictures of this to um, Twitter, but don't worry, I did not tell anybody what printer it came from. <laughs> I'm going to let them stew and wonder. <laughs> I like torturing my viewers. But um, that is impressive. That's a good job. So now I'm printing a protonome, and I'll print a few other things, and we'll see how it does. But so far, very impressed. I'm going to have to replace that fan, though, because otherwise I'm going to blow my brains out because of that high-pitched noise. <laughs> <laughs> More to come.